What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to the final episode of season 3 of the Liverpool Carrier Boat Show. If you want to see season 4 start later today, let's get this video to 300 likes. And guys, you guys left some amazing comments on the previous episode, so thank you so much for all your transfer suggestions, keep them coming. And you guys recommended me these players, the most popular players were... Virgil van Dijk, he could replace Tejan Lovren, I think it would be a good transfer, he is linked to Liverpool in real life and uh, Lovren to be honest I'm not really a big fan of him uh, in real life and on this career boat, he has been a solid player but we have Matip and Laporte and van Dijk could be our third choice centre back in case Matip or Laporte gets a long term injury, he could come in in some of the big games and in the smaller games he could be a really really awesome player to use uh, he's six foot four only 24 years old 27 years old so he has, he has a good five years in him also loads of you guys said that i should sign renato sanchez but the thing is we don't really need a defensive midfielder but i could because steven gerard is retiring but i could sell maybe jordan henderson um, to free up more space, but I don't really want to sell Henderson. He's the club captain in real life and he, I'm a really big fan of him. But let me know, do you want me to sign Sanchez and maybe keep Henderson? Or what should I do? Riyad Mahrez is also a very popular player in your guys' eyes, uh, but I can only bring him in or another winger if we sell a big player up front. And that could be Daniel Sturridge, who is approaching 30 years of age. And he's quite injury prone. In, the, in season 1 in this career mode, Daniel Sturridge was the top scorer. But since then he has been in and out of the side. He suffered a lot of injuries because he's injury prone. So, so yeah, he, we could replace Sturridge with Mares or another attacking player. Uh, you guys commented Musa Dembele or Kasper Dorberg. I'm scouting him at the moment. So I, I want to find out what his stats are. But... Some of you guys said that he's a 92 rated player in your career mode, so that's why I shortlisted him. And Musa Dembele, he looks like a really good player, as you can see, great pace, good finishing, but only 3 star weak foot and 3 star skill moves, so I'm not sure we really need him. Because I already showed you the Premier League table and all the detail, the stats from the Premier League in the Premier League season finale episode, so check it out. We lost to Chelsea in the Community Shield final on penalties, which was heartbreaking, but at least we beat them in the Champions League final, that's the most important competition. And I think uh, Manchester United must be absolutely hating this season, Jose Mourinho must be livid, because Man United finished 5th, so they didn't qualify for the Champions League. They lost the FA Cup final to us, we won the FA Cup final with a... a extra time a thrilling cup final they lost man united lost the league cup final to arsenal who finished second in the premier league but them winning the trophy uh, it, it is a good season for arsenal but man united must be sick of the side of it the, we lost uh, another cup final on penalties to sevilla which is quite heartbreaking and chelsea lost another cup final to napoli uh, the european super cup final so, and yeah, last season I think Chelsea uh, won the Champions League and Napoli won the Europa League. So, actually Chelsea made it to the Champions League final two years in a row, which is quite a remarkable achievement. And Chelsea also made it into the top four again. Uh, last season they finished in the outside of the top four. But the most important trophy, the Champions League, we beat Chelsea in the final and that was a cracking tournament. We already reviewed the tournament showing you everything, the top scorers and everything. So this was a really, really awesome tournament. But let's see who, who won the Europa League. Arsenal went to the semi-finals of the Europa League, but then they lost to Leverkusen. And Leverkusen went on to win the trophy on penalties against Inter. And Swansea City made it to the last 16 of the Champions League which is quite a, a very, very good achievement in my opinion. If with Hungary we are in danger of not qualifying to the Euros, I think it's pretty much done. We need an absolute miracle to qualify and uh, there will be the Copa America. I'm not involved because I'm not a manager of any of the South American nations. Uh, and now let's see the squad report and this is the big one guys. Oh yeah, before we go to, to the squad report, I wanted to show you the top scorers of each competition, so Nikolic is the top scorer, 
for the European qualifiers, uh, you are, I already show you, showed you the Premier League top scorers. Sterling won the top scorer award, Coman won the top assist award for the Premier League. So Coman is a contender for player of the season. And uh, yeah, the Community Shield, uh, there will be, that was just the one game, no goals in that. The FA Cup, Martial won the top scorer award in the FA Cup, what we won the trophy and that's the most important thing. Gabriel uh, finished as the top assist man and Dembele as well in the FA Cup. Uh, and in the League Cup we got knocked out early, uh, Arsenal went on to win the trophy and Danny Welbeck interestingly finished as the top scorer in the League Cup, Sanchez with the most assists. Pre-season tournament not really interested in that. Uh, European Super Cup final, Diavara score, scored two goals. Champions League, Stoke City, uh, I think had a miraculous run in the Champions League. They beat Barcelona in the group stage and they went on, I think, to the last 16 when they lost to Dortmund. But Shakiri finished as the top scorer in the Champions League with Morata and Icardi. That's quite remarkable. And Icardi... Uh, somehow he finished as the top scorer even though Inter dropped down to the Europa League and then Inter went on to make it to the final of the Europa League so what a weird season <laughs> for Inter and Stoke City made it to the Champions League again which is also remarkable Gabriel had three assists in the Champions League as well and they all had the most clean sheets in the Champions League and the Europa League top scorer was Kevin Campo of Bayer Leverkusen so that's very interesting and that reminded me of uh, shortlisting Julian Brandt because he is heavily linked with Liverpool uh, right now. We don't really want you know, and need all these young players but I think what I want to do is uh, scout Julian Brandt and see what his rating is. Oh, we already know his rating. So he's 83 rated overall, very good acceleration and sprint speed and his finishing is 83. So, so he looks like uh, he's a good player, so maybe I will pick him up, but you guys will ultimately decide it. But now for the squad report, and I think it's time to give the, the season awards show for the best... Uh, I think the player of the season could be either Kingsley Coman or Paulo Dybala. They scored the joint most goals, but I have to give it to Kingsley who actually scored 14 goals and because he gave 11 assists during the season he finishes as the player of the season but Dybala also uh, I think finished as our joint top scorer special mention to Gabriel who also scored 10 goals for us and 9 assists Daniel Sturridge wasn't as prolific as you can see he almost played like half the games uh, that, uh, that Kingsley Coman Played. And to be honest, Dybala scored 14 goals in 35 games, Coman scored 14 goals in 45 games. So maybe Dybala uh, also deserves a, a mention. I think I will give a joint award to player of the season, Dybala and Coman. A special mention to Gabriel and uh, Daniel Sturridge. Dennings also contributed with 4 goals and, uh, and 3 assists. Roberto Firmino! For the, until the Champions League semi-final against Man United, he had a dreadful season. He scored no goals, but then he pops up in the Champions League semi-final against Man United and scores two goals, one of them an incredible long shot. And also he scored in the, I think in the final Premier League games or something like that. Um, and Coutinho has only one year left on his contract and in real life he just signed a contract extension, which I'm very happy about it. I think I will make a detailed video about that. But in this career mode, he refuses, he keeps refusing to sign a new contract. So we probably will have Coutinho for one final season at Liverpool. Should I sell him this season? Because if he doesn't sign a contract, a new contract, and I don't really want to lose Philip Coutinho for absolutely nothing because he's worth 53 million pounds. So let me know, should I sell Coutinho this summer just to prevent him moving on for a free transfer? Leon Bailey, special mention to him as well, he also got 10 goals, so even though he, he also had a big injury. So I think we had a lot of front players, forward players who contributed uh, massively. And uh, Bailey scored in the Champions League final as well, which is a huge achievement for him. Um, the best midfielder 
of the season. And that's uh, really tough. By the way, Pulisic is on loan at Crystal Palace and he scored six goals for Crystal Palace. So I think next season I will keep Puli the likes of Pulisic and Ojo and give them more playing time. I just have to give it uh, to Steven Gerrard who scored three goals in total. Two of them were in the Premier League and in his final season, 39 years old, he's retiring probably. He lifted three major trophies as Liverpool captain, so hats off to him. Well, he lifted, uh, I think the FA Cup was lifted by Lovren because uh, Gerard couldn't make it into the extra time. But uh, yeah, Mahmoud Dahoud and Anderson are also showing great promise, especially Dahoud who improved by a plus three uh, rating wise. I think the most improved player uh, must be this guy, Mark McDonald. So he is the best young player at the club in my opinion right now 18 years old he improved by 14 ratings wise because i've been training him massively which is great as you can see his finishing for example improved by 31 because i trained his finishing all year long so that is just crazy very very good alan and brennigan needs to go out on loan but they are slowly improving and Gruich his loan to Hoffenheim was a great decision because he's now an 80 rated centre midfielder so I want to give him a bigger role next season Usmane Dembele also had a great season he scored eight goals and got six assists uh, Mane as well scored eight goals and four assists and this is why we had, we built such a big squad because even when we got we had Dybala out injured or Mane or Sturridge we had other players to come in and score goals for us. Ian Murphy, also a very, very promising young player. He's probably the most promising young player at the club he got here. Maybe I will change his mind. I think I will change his mind. I think I will change my mind. I will give him the best young player of the season award because uh, McDonald is the most improved player of the season. That's the award goes to him. But Ian Murphy will be the best young player because this is his breakthrough season. He scored two goals and got six assists. Two goals of that came in the FA Cup. And I think he is, you know, the player who has like 93 to 94 potential. So really excited about him. And we have other young players. Trent Alexander-Arnold also had a good season. Three goals and two assists. And, uh, and Ryan Kent as well came on in the Champions League on his debut. He scored a goal and then got injured. I remember him. And this guy is the Chubby Alonso regen. I've been training. He's defending. As you can see, his defending stats went up by a lot. So I hopefully I can mold him into a great center defensive midfielder. And then we have other young players at the club who need to go out on loan. Adam Nagy also had a pretty awesome season only played for 10 games Kevin Stewart we have so many awesome young players at the club I think I will maybe sell Kevin Stewart he's 25 years old because I think Gruich is better than Kevin Stewart and Kevin Stewart is 25 so he won't improve an awful lot and I want to give the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold and the youth career players more chance Jetro Willems what a season he had Sam Hart, I think I will sell him as well because he's a real-life Liverpool youngster and he's just, just not growing. Even though I trained him, I played him quite a lot of times, seven appearances, he only went up by two ratings and he's 66 rated, his potential is probably not as high as some of the youth academy players. Uh, Moreno also had a good season, three, he scored three goals and got two assists for a left back, that's great. And Joe Gomez, he played some of the Champions League games, as you can see he played six games in the Champions League for Barcelona, which is just amazing. He improved uh, by quite a lot, Imeri Kloport also had a brilliant season. And Lovren, 29 years old, I think it's time for him to move on, he won everything with Liverpool, so he had a great few years at the club but I think it's strong from fresh blood and uh, Mere will be also a very important player. Iamon Lynch, he was in contention to be the one of the most improved uh, young players of the season. I think the best defender of the season is Laporte. I said the best midfielder is Steven Gerrard but that's probably a sentimental decision. Maybe the, the true best midfielder was Coutinho. And Joao Matip is still recovering from that horrible ACL injury. He only played 20 games in total this season. 
he still has seven weeks to recover so he will be ready for next season Nathan Klein also had a great season scored two goals and um, yeah John Flanagan as well he scored in one of the title deciding games that was his only goal in the Premier League what a contribution he made and Loris Karius the best goalkeeper at the club, he was world class, he saved my ass so so many times, look at those goalkeeping stats, just amazing. And then we have a very young uh, player, goalkeeper who is coming through, I haven't been actually training him and look at that growth below me that you can see, the, his goalkeeping stats have been going up and Gian, Gianluigi Donnarumma also showing great promise. He's also a very, very good young player, only 20 years old and he has been at the club since the start. So when, when Karius retires or ends his career, we have a, two very good young goalkeepers coming through. So with the goalkeeping situation, I think we are sorted. So let me know who was your player of the season, who was your best attacker, midfielder, defender, goalkeeper. Who was your favorite uh, player in the series this season? Who was, uh, you know, the best young player, the most improved player? Let me know your end of season awards. And before we end the episode, I also wanted to show you some other leagues. I moved the face cam down so you can see the league standings and who won the league and by how many points. So I'm really interested to see who actually got promoted. In, from the championship because there were some big uh, teams in the championship who got relegated last season for example I remember West Brom getting relegated and Burnley and they both got back into the Premier League the third team we don't know that yet but I really hope it's either Bournemouth or Brighton I like both clubs uh, Brighton will probably get promoted in real life and Bournemouth are doing really really well in the in the Premier League in real life but I, I wouldn't mind Wolverhampton or, or Fulham either so this is how the championship table finished and yeah let's move on to the other leagues uh, Paris Paris Saint-Germain oh my goodness 100 points they won the, the French League unbeaten but we beat them on penalties in the Champions League so that is a big big achievement seeing that they actually didn't lose a game in this French League which is pretty incredible pretty remarkable in Germany Bayern Munich won the league unbeaten as well what <laughs> I don't remember seeing this before two clubs won the rest effective leaves leagues unbeaten and Juventus finished on 91 points no other team got any chance but somehow Juventus actually were in the Europa League uh, <laughs> uh, I think they got dropped down from the Champions League for finishing third in their group but Inter, Roma and Fiorentina no Inter and only Roma qualified to the, to the Champions League next season so I'm interested to find out who actually made it to the Champions League Ajax won the Dutch League, PSV and Feyenoord finished second and third. Legia Warsaw won the Polish league, only losing two games in the process. And a big surprise in Portugal, Braga, little Braga won the Portuguese league, had the, the big three, Benfica, Porto and Sporting. So that's very interesting. Rubin Kazan won the Russian league. They usually are not up there towards the league title in real life. So and uh, Quincy promises Spartak Moscow is only in fourth place. I could actually go for Quincy Promise as well. Celtic won the, the Scottish League ahead of Aberdeen and Rangers only finished third with a worse goal difference than, than Aberdeen. And Barcelona won the, the Spanish League ahead of Real Madrid. VRL and Atletico will make up the top four, so Sevilla again uh, qualify only for the Europa League and Galatasaray won the Turkish League and LA Galaxy won the I think it's the MLS hasn't finished yet so yeah we shall wait and see who wins that league but I think I will finish the season right now and I really hope that you guys and ooh, I really hope that you guys enjoyed season 3 and I'm really looking forward to season 4 and by Leverkusen say that they want 43 million for Julian Brandt but now let's end the season and in the next episode you will be able to see 
what kind of transfers I go for for season 4 so keep your transfer suggestions coming in the comments below and thanks for watching see you later guys goodbye